pleasure to be here. Thank you, Dr. Kalali, for inviting us. This is our first time attending this conference, but I truly believe and hope that it will be the first of many. Thank you all for putting, in a, putting together great presentations. So Advanced Brain Monitoring is a medical device manufacturer. We've been in business now for 15 years, and we've been developing and commercializing mobile, scalable, easy to use technologies for recording and acquiring physiological signals. We've focused a great deal on the brain and the brain's electrical activity, the EEG, but we've also developed systems for cardio, respiratory, um, measuring skin impedance, temperature, just about any signal that you can measure non-invasively from the human, we've, we've been involved with at some point in time. Now, um, over the last three years, we've been focusing on ways to deliver these products and services to the clinical trials industry. Uh, and we built out the infrastructure to service that industry. And I'm really pleased to say that this year, uh, we've, we've started um, uh, now four multi-site clinical trials in the US and internationally that are using these systems. So we are able to scale and move into this market and we hope that you will be involved in one of our next clinical trials. So EEG is a cost-effective biomarker, and it's particularly well-suited for neurodegenerative diseases as well as psychiatric diseases. During the daytime, we use EEG to capture the engagement of the neural circuits, both during resting state, so we can look at the default mode network and the resting state circuitry, as well as during uh, neurocognitive tasks where we can actually stimulate and elicit neural patterns associated with things like attention, memory, and cognition. Now at the night, during the nighttime, uh, we have our sleep architecture, and we can analyze and quantify the sleep to give you information about sleep disturbances and other associated sleep issues that are, uh, of course, important factors in psychiatric disease as well as in neurodegenerative disorders. Um, and what we're advocating is the use of the combined daytime and nighttime EEG to give you a full comprehensive picture of that patient's brain activity both during waking and sleep. So these are two technologies you're probably very familiar with because they are commonly used if you are looking at sleep in clinical trials. Uh, on the one hand, we have our traditional gold standard polysomnography patient has to go into the laboratory, be hooked up with a hundred different wires, be observed by, by the clinician or the technician during sleep. It's quite cumbersome and, and sometimes it's amazing that people can actually get a good night's sleep in the laboratory. And then on the other, other extreme, we have our actigraphy or our relatively simple mobile devices that are increasingly useful. and. I certainly agree with my colleague yesterday who talked about the use of actigraphy and how now with mathematical modeling and big data sets, we can mine that data and extract quite a bit of information. But what we would like to introduce you to is the best of both worlds. So our sleep profiler system takes all of the 10 signals that are acquired during full polysomnography and incorporates them into this really simple self-applied device. Uh, and that's the first part of, of uh, the acquisition of the data. Uh, patients can easily apply it themselves at home, or you can dispense it at the clinic site, and the patient can go home with it and put it on. Uh, we recommend at least two nights, but if you want to do repeated night testing, that's fine. Um, the data are then uploaded to our cloud portal, where we have a HIPAA compliant and secure way of transferring the data. The, the data are then accessible uh, if, if you have um, medical team, medical staff that want to uh, examine that data, or we have our auto scoring algorithms that gives you a full sleep proof quantitative sleep architecture. And all of these systems that I'm talking about today are FDA cleared, so they're very easy to drop into your clinical trial protocols. For the daytime assessment, um, we're primarily using our 24-channel system, which again is designed to be really easy to use, very comfortable, it's lightweight, 
We can drop ship these anywhere in the world. And we, we have a very simple training and certification program so that any of you could be instantly trained to apply the systems and, and get high quality data. So again, for our sleep profiler, uh, we're using the three channels of, of frontal EEG. We have validated scoring al algorithms that give you, um, we analyze the snoring and other sounds made by the patient during the night. We analyze the pulse rate, pulse rate variability. We look at head movement and head position um, to quantify arousals and also to monitor the sleeping position and the amount of activity during sleep. And then, of course, we're using the EEG to do our sleep architecture. We can compute all of the, all of the standard uh, sleep variables that you get in, in a hypnogram, but then we've also started to do some more in-depth research on some novel biomarkers, including sleep spindle, spindle density, and quantity, quantity of slow wave sleep and the amplitude of the slow wave delta sleep. During the daytime, um, we have access to all of the resting state data. So we just have the patient sit quietly with eyes open and eyes closed. Uh, that resting state data gives us quite a bit of information on the neural circuitry. Uh, we analyze that with a lot of the classic analyses, fast Fourier transform, wavelet analyses, wavelet extraction. Uh, we've done a lot of work now with Loretta so we can create a 3D model of the brain and give you more in-depth neuroanatomical profile, um, as well as we've been working now for the past 10 years on machine learning algorithms to take some of these larger data sets that we've acquired and, and hone in on key clinical outcome variables that we believe to be useful as biomarkers in clinical trials. Uh, so again, these are just some of the biomarkers that we're able to extract that have already proven useful in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and mild cognitive impairment. On, on the sleep side, we look at sleep continuity. We look at the REM um, cycles and things like REM behavior disorder, which is uh, proving to be a very important predictor or early sensitive biomarker for Parkinson's and the Lewy body disorders. Um, and then we also look at limb movements and sleep disordered breathing. On the daytime side, we're looking for changes in power spectroactivity, coherence, uh, and also in some of our trials, we're doing elicitation protocols. So we're giving an attention task, a memory task, or an emotion eliciting protocol, and we can look at the EEG in response to those, as those stimulating effects as well. Um, similarly, we have a number of, of studies now going in for mood disorders, schizophrenia, uh, again with a cross-section of both nighttime and daytime uh, biomarkers that we can use to profile these disorders. So, at, and if you want to take kind of a step to another level and not just look at disease state, uh, we can talk about the cognitive con core cognitive constructs and how some of these EEG-based biomarkers relate to core cognitive constructs such as memory. Uh, and we have a, a growing body of information now that suggests that many sleep parameters are critical for memory consolidation, memory retrieval. Uh, and then we also have the ability to look at some of the changes in the, in the daytime EEG during the actual consolidation of memories and retrieval processes. We also have a number of other protocols and biomarkers that we're examining that reflect attention and executive, executive processes. So finally, this is the, the, the program that we've worked on for the last three years was to make this these scalable technologies suitable for your environment, the clinical trial environment. Um, and so we've built out our cloud portals. Uh, we've developed a, a really simple six-step process for training and certification that can be done remotely. So through a WebEx, we can actually train your staff or your CRO staff to acquire these data. Um, and we, we have proficiency testing through self-guided instructions, as well as a formal certification and a practicum. Um, and then we have software that gives us information and tracks all of the technicians that have access to the cloud portal. 
to secure web-based, allow centralized data management, uh, and we can have auditable analyses and timely reporting to the sponsor. Uh, in ad addition, as I said, our devices are all FDA cleared, and the services are compliant with the regulatory guidance according to HIPAA and 21 CRF Part 11. So that's it. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? I'm sure there are many. <laughs> so with the unit you just showed there, is it uh, capable of doing oxygenation and you, I saw the limb movements. Is it other attachments or just what you see there in the... So you, you, we can use a peripheral pulse ox. Um, we have, we did introduce a device for um, uh, uh, obstructive sleep apnea diagnosis that had, we had, we built a forehead oximeter. Um, actually, the finger is, is much more reliable, so it adds a little bit of complexity, but it is a more reliable oximetry signal than on the forehead. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes? Good question. How do you do ERPs with your system? Evoke potential. Oh, yes. How do you do ERPs with your system? You need How to are you evoking? How do you ERP. do ERPs? With ERP. Your system? ERP. Evoke, ERP. Evoke, evoke potential. Oh yes, 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 yes. So we do quite a bit of work with evoke potentials. How do you do that? You have to stimulate and tr and and, and Just, send the trigger to. Yes. Yeah, so we have. How, how is it set up? You have to visual and auditory protocols. So you can either do it on a laptop or a desktop computer, and different stimuli are presented. In our attention task, we have a we have a 20 minute sustained attention task. There's targets and non-targets, and so we're looking at the evoked activity to the targets. We also have a affective stimuli, so positive and negative uh, faces um, that are part of our mood disorder protocol. Thank you. Very very interesting. Thank you so much.